Hello, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are around the world, and a huge welcome to today's postgrad insight session, which is the first of many LLM focuses in the US over the next 12 months. Now, before we get started, just a reminder that this is a live webinar. If you have any questions on social media, please do put them on the messenger facility or email myself, Gareth, at postgradsolutions.com. Um, also a reminder that today's session is in conjunction with the University of Miami, and if you have registered, they will be in touch afterwards, um, and it is all fully GDPR compliant. Now, without wasting too much more time, I'd like to introduce you to Sandra, who is Assistant Dean at International Graduate Law Programs at the University of Miami School of Law. Sandra, over to you, and I will see you guys for the Q&A at the end of the presentation. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm very excited to talk to you today about pathways to study and practice law in the United States for foreign trained lawyers. I'm actually a foreign trained lawyer myself. I'm originally from Germany. I went to law school in Germany and France, and then came to the US and actually the University of Miami School of Law to pursue my LLM studies. So I've been in your shoes and uh, I know, uh, you know a lot of the questions that are going through your mind uh, at this stage. So I'm hoping to answer all of them today during this webinar. All right, so let's get uh, started. I also wanna take a moment to introduce our international programs advisor, Alexandria Sellers, who will be here today with me for the webinar. Um, Ali, over to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. As Sandra mentioned, my name is Alexandria. I'm an international program advisor here at Miami Law, I'm working with our different international graduate law programs. If you have any questions, as Gareth mentioned, we're going to be doing a Q&A at the end. So thank you so much for joining us. And over to you, Sandra. So what are we going to be covering today? We're going to be talking about the different law degree options in the United States. We're also going to go over the different LLM study options, how to apply to an LLM program. We're going to talk about scholarship opportunities and other financing options, about the post-graduation work permit that is very popular with our LLM students here at Miami Law. And then we're also going to give some details on practicing law in the United States as a foreign trained lawyer and taking a U.S. bar exam. It's quite a lot of ground to cover, so I'm going to get right to it. So first of all, there are three law degrees that are offered uh, generally in the United States. All three of them are offered at Miami Law. So first up, we have the Juris Doctor degree, also known as the JD. This is a post-bachelor degree. You can compare it to the LLB. It's basically the first degree in law here in the United States. And it usually takes three years for American students to complete. Now, the second degree is the Master of Law, the LLM. This is a post-GD or post-foreign law degree, meaning you already have to have a law degree, whether from the United States or from another country, before you can pursue your LLM studies. And the LLM usually only takes one year, really one academic year. Um, most of our students here start in August and they finish in May, so it's really just about nine months. Of course, there might be part-time options, so it could be longer, but generally speaking, that's a one-year degree. And then last but not least, we have the Doctor of Juridical Science, which is also known as the SJD. This usually requires that you already hold a graduate degree in law, meaning an LLM, and it is an equivalent to a PhD in law. It usually takes three years to complete. This is Miami Law's newest addition to our law degrees. We're very excited. We're in our first year for our SJD program now. Um, and so these are the three different types of law degrees that you can pursue in the United States. All right. Now, let's focus on the LLM degree because I know that most of you are interested in that particular degree option. There are basically two different kinds of LLM degrees. We have the general LLM, which usually is very limited in terms of mandatory courses. Here at Miami Law, we only have two mandatory courses for our general LLM, which is our uh, LLM in US and transnational law for foreign trained lawyers. Um, the two mandatory courses here for us are Introduction to U.S. Law and Legal Writing and Research for Foreign Lawyers. And other than that, the general LLM usually offers a lot of flexibility to choosing your courses for students to focus on whatever area of interest they would like to pursue. So you can customize your curriculum here at Miami Law. We speak to the students one-on-one -on -one 
about their career goals, their study goals, and we really customize the uh, course selection with each individual student. We have over 300 annual courses, lectures, um, seminars, workshops, and so forth. So the choices are really uh, very extensive. So our students are able to focus on core American law topics in the general LLM, like contracts law, business associations, towards a constitutional law, but they're also able to focus and take classes from the many specialty areas that we offer here at Miami Law, uh, including entertainment arts and sports law, including taxation, including international dispute resolution, ESG, international human rights, technology law, IP, immigration law, so forth, you name it. Uh, the curriculum is uh, really quite extensive. So this flexible approach is, I think, one of the main benefits of pursuing a general LLM because it really allows each individual student to pursue exactly the course of study that they would like to take. And of course, the general LLM also enables the students to take whatever courses are necessary to qualify for a U.S. bar exam. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in more detail. Now, on the flip side, we have the specialized LLM programs. Here at Miami Law, we have a number of specialized LLM programs, including entertainment arts and sports law, international law, international arbitration, and so forth. Um, now, of course, the benefit of these programs is that you can specialize in your area of interest and gain a profound understanding of your area of interest. With that, of course, comes a few more requirements in terms of courses. There's usually more mandatory uh, courses in the specialized programs. For example, in our entertainment arts and sports law, international arbitration, and maritime law programs, at least 12 of the required 24 credits have to come from the specialty area. Now, in addition to that, students in our specialized programs are still able to take core American law courses. Um, here at Miami Law, we do not segregate our LLM students from the JD students. All the courses are joined. So our LLM students take classes with American JD students in contracts and business associations and so forth, which I think is a very, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way to get to know some of the American students and to really experience uh, the uh, US classroom experience here. Um, generally speaking, our specialized LLM programs are open to both foreign and domestically trained lawyers. So in the specialized LLM programs here at Miami Law, you will uh, study together with other lawyers from uh, all around the world, uh, but also with some lawyers from the United States. So these programs are usually mixed. Let me show you a list of our program offerings. So like I said, our general LLM program offering most flexibility is our US and transnational law LLM for foreign trained lawyers. And our specialized programs include LLM programs on entertainment, arts and sports law, on international arbitration, on international law, maritime law, real estate, real property development, taxation and taxation of cross-border investment. For the last two programs, we actually do have an online option available. The other programs are um, campus-based programs. So we're back in the classroom now, um, almost entirely. So uh, those programs are mostly classroom-based. All right. So let me talk a little bit about the different LM study options. I know that that's always um, a very, um, that's a very common, very frequent question. So first of all, our programs can be pursued either full-time. If you're pursuing an LLM program here at Miami Law full-time, it usually takes two semesters, which could be, depending on your start date, um, you know, as little as nine months. We do have part-time options, both for domestic and foreign students of three to four semesters in uh, the LLM programs. It, of course, depends on the program, and the students can customize their schedule and their study plans with each program director individually to really um, you know, take into account your timing, but also your career goals and plans. We do offer a regular fall admission, which here in the United States uh, and 
is usually in August, but we also offer a spring admission option in January, which might be very helpful for some of you who might be graduating towards the end of the calendar year, for example, or even in September or October. And then if you don't want to wait almost an entire year to start your LLM, we do offer a January start option every year. Uh, summer studies here at Miami Law are not required, but they're optional. So our students are able to extend into summer. Or if you start in spring, you're able to take some classes in the summer. So it's a possibility, but it's not required. You can also take the summer off and explore Florida and uh, the greater United States. We do have a couple of other options combined with our LM programs that I want to note because they're really popular. Um, and for students who um, for example, might like to stay in the United States longer or for students who need to improve their English, these options can be very valuable. So first of all, we have our very popular JD LLM joint degree option. So remember the JD is the Juris Doctor is the basic American law degree. Um, usually it takes three years and the LLM usually takes one year. So combined, these degrees would normally take four years. However, here at Miami Law, we have a very popular joint degree option where our foreign trained lawyers can pursue both the Juris Doctor and the LLM in as little as two to two and a half calendar years. And most importantly, the law school admissions test, also known as the LSAT, which is normally required when you want to apply for a JD program, is not required for all foreign trained lawyers who pursue the joint degree and come uh, in through the LLM. So it's a very popular degree option. I can go into a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, now, in addition to that, we also have a very popular three semester option with an intensive legal English semester plus LLM. So this takes three semesters. The first semester focuses on intensive legal English, and then the students start their regular LLM studies in August. This program starts in spring and is meant for students who either want or need to improve their English proficiency before embarking on their LLM studies. In addition to that, we have flexible options during the summer and also concurrently during the regular semesters for individualized legal English support through our intensive English department here at the University of Miami that some of our students have also found very helpful. Let me give you a little bit more detail on the intensive legal English option. Like I said, this program only starts in January. So applications for this program need to be submitted in the previous fall semester. Our um, priority deadline is December 1st every year. If you anticipate needing a student visa, it'd be advisable to apply by November 1st because visa issuance can take a little bit longer. The first semester in the intensive legal English plus LM program will focus mostly on English language communication skills, including speaking, legal writing, and research um, for the duration of the spring semester. And afterwards, students join the incoming LLM class in the fall uh, without having to retake the TOEFL or IELTS English proficiency test. So this is also a very nice, um, a very nice um, feature of this program. You don't have to retake the English proficiency testing. And this program is available with our general LLM but also with most of our specialized LM options. So for example, our students can pursue the intensive legal English program together with the LLM in US and transnational law, the LLM in international arbitration and maritime law and so forth. So it's a very popular option here at Miami Law. In addition to that, we have the JD LM joint degree. So this is meant for foreign trained lawyers who would like to pursue not just the LLM, but also the Juris Doctor degree. And this, these both degrees can be earned in as little as two or two and a half years, which of course is a significant savings on time because remember, usually it takes four. Um, and of course, also tuition money. Our foreign trained lawyers in this program can receive up to 29 advanced standing credits based on their foreign legal education. Also, very importantly, the LSAT is not required, the law school admissions test, which is normally required to apply to a JD program outright, is not required if you're pursuing this joint degree option. 
uh, many years ago, I pursued the joint degree myself. I still had to take the LSAT then. So speaking from experience, it's a very difficult test. And I think our students are very excited that they do not have to do this anymore. This program offers a lot of flexibility here in the United States. The first year in law school traditionally is the most difficult. It's also where you have absolutely no flexibility in terms of your schedule and your courses. And the nice thing about this joint degree program is that our students are never first year students in the GD. They're always considered upper level students, meaning that they get to customize their schedules throughout this program. And they can always mix the typical first year law topics like contracts and torts with the upper level courses. This program can be pursued with our general LLM and US and transnational, but also with most of our specialized programs, including the program in international arbitration, in maritime law and entertainment arts and sports law and so forth. So it's a very popular program option here. And the application is simplified. It doesn't have to go through LSEC either. Our students simply apply during the first semester of the LLM studies. So you just apply to the LLM at first, and then you apply to transfer into the GD program. And last point I want to make on this is that we have now had several students who very successfully combined the intensive legal English program with the LLM and with the GD. So they came in needing to improve their English skills. They started in the spring semester in the intensive legal English program then pursued your LLM and ultimately transferred into the GD LLM joint degree and successfully completed all three. So this is also a pathway that might be very interesting to some of you. So how do you apply to an LLM program? Well, here in Miami Law, we have two options. And I included here how to apply to a GD so you can see what are the differences. If you wanted to apply to a GD program outright, you would have to take the LSAT, the law school admission says, this is the standardized entrance exam. Uh, from personal experience, it's a difficult test, especially for non-native English speakers. Um, at the time, it was a very difficult test for me to take. So this is only required if you wanted to apply to a GD program outright, which most foreign lawyers do not, um, do not need to do. So how do you apply to an LLM? What well, the good news is that you do not need the LSAT. All you need to know is an English proficiency test. Here at Miami Law, we accept the TOEFL or IELTS exam. Our requirements are generally 92 on the TOEFL or 7.0 on the IELTS to enter the LLM. If your score is lower, however, you can enter the intensive legal English program plus LLM. So no worries if your score is a little bit below. Of course, if you come from a country where English is the official language or you completed your university education in English, you can also apply for a waiver. That's a, that's a, not a problem. So here at Miami Law, there's two ways to apply to the LM program. You can apply through LSAC, the Law School Admissions Council, but you can also apply directly to Miami Law through our online application system, which generally uh, tends to be a little bit cheaper than LSAC, especially if you only applying to a few schools in the United States, you might prefer applying to the school directly rather than going through LSAC. What do you need? You need to write a personal statement telling us why you're interested in pursuing an LLM, why Miami Law, if you're applying for a specialty program, tell us about your interest in international arbitration, maritime law, um, real property development, or whatever it might be. Tell us about your future career goals. Where do you see yourself after the LLM? Those are all good um, elements to include in your personal statement. For us, the personal statement has to be about a page, about 500 words, so it doesn't have to be overly long. We just want to get an idea about who you are, what your goals are, and what um, specifically is your interest in pursuing an LLM at the University of Miami School of Law. In addition to that, you need two letters of recommendation. We usually ask for at least one of the recommendation letters to be from an academic um, uh, and professor, former professor, current professor. If you have worked for a number of years, then the second recommendation letter can also be from a professional contact, uh, usually a supervisor at your law firm or at your company, whatever it might be, that would be um, perfectly fine. We will need official transcripts and diploma for all of your university education, and of course, also a resume or a CV. So, 
Uh, as you can see, I also indicated the LLM uh, JD degree on the right side of the slide here. Like I mentioned, the application for that is very simple and only happens when you're already started in the LLM program. So I'm not going to give all too many details on that other than that it's a really simple process for our students to apply to that. All right. I also want to talk a little bit about scholarships available to our LLM students, foreign and domestic here at Miami Law and other funding opportunities for your LLM studies in the United States. So here at Miami Law, we have a number of full tuition scholarships available for our LLM students, depending on the program. So since we have so many different LLM programs, the first step really would be to identify the program of interest for you and then research the scholarship opportunities with each of these programs. For example, in our International Arbitration LM program, we have two full tuition scholarships uh, for our students uh, through, um, we have a writing case, full tuition scholarship award, uh, and also an award with Young ICA, which is a young international arbitration organization. So depending on the programs, we will see um, that there are different um, scholarship opportunities, including full tuition awards. Um, there's also a number of partial tuition scholarship opportunities with our programs. And there are some specialty scholarships for participants of certain moot court competitions, for example, the VSMOOD or the FDI MOOD in the international arbitration sphere, certain educational fairs like eFellows, uh, for example, certain professional organizations like AISHA, which is the International Organization of Young Lawyers and so forth. So that might also be interesting for some of you. Those specialty scholarships might um, apply to you. And we have a few scholarship agreements with universities around the world for their students or graduates. So that's also worth um, checking out, of course. Um, here, usually our students are considered automatically for any and all available scholarships with their application. Of course, it'd be helpful if you identified yourself as a participant of these moot court competitions or educational fairs so that we know that you might qualify for that scholarship award. So make sure that in you include that in your resume. Um, there's only one um, scholarship option that uh, requires an essay submission in our international programs, and that's for the Young ICA scholarship. But you can find more information on that on our website. Of course, if you would like to be considered for scholarships, you should always apply as early as possible. Here at Miami Law, we accept um, applications on a rolling basis until the semester starts or all spots are filled. But our priority deadline for most programs is May 1st for an August start. So definitely try to get your application in the earlier, the better, especially if you would like to be considered for scholarships. Now, outside of scholarship offerings at Miami Law, we also encourage our students to explore external scholarship opportunities. There are many independent organizations that offer scholarships to highly qualified students based on your country of origin, your country of legal training, based on the specialization you're pursuing, based on gender and so forth. And also some governmental organizations, some countries are providing scholarship support for their highly qualified nationals to pursue LLM studies in the United States. It would take way too long for me to go all, all these options because they're very specific to your nationality, to the country where you pursued your legal education and so forth. We do have a rather extensive list of these opportunities though. So if you would like to learn more, always feel free to contact us and we can send you a list of external scholarship listings that might be applicable to you. All right, and last but not least, I wanted to cover some of the other funding options. This is another question that we have uh, very frequently. Uh, so first up, there is financial aid available here at Miami Law for mostly U.S. citizens and green card holders. So financial aid or government loans, those are mostly applicable for um, U.S. citizens and green card holders. However, our international students might also qualify for private student loans, either in your home country or in the United States. Again, if you're interested in that, we're happy to share some um, uh, companies with you that our students have been successful in obtaining loans from uh, here in the US so that you can explore those options. Our students are also able to work as graduate research assistants at the law school. 
um, assisting individual professors, working with our International Arbitration Institute, for example, on research projects. Those positions are paid. Um, some of our students are also working as teaching assistants in some of uh, the courses here at the law school. Um, again, those are paid positions and there are a number of employment opportunities on campus outside of the law school. Uh, there are work study opportunities. Our students work as language tutors. They work at the university gym and so forth. International students are permitted to work on campus. That is not a problem. So all of those on-campus work opportunities are open to our international students um, here at Miami Law. Some of our students also pursue what we would call a law clerkship with law firms or companies. Those positions are off campus um, or some are associate positions um, during their LLM studies or after their LLM studies. We run a very popular practicum program here at Miami Law for our international LLM students that allows the students to work uh, during their LLM with a variety of international law firms, both um, large firms and boutique firms, um, international organizations, companies, and so forth. Um, so this is a very popular option for our students here at Miami Law. And then, of course, there is also the post-graduation work permit I'm going to talk about uh, in more detail here in a second that is very popular with our students. And last but not least, here at Miami Law, there's also a payment plan. So there is a possibility to uh, pay um, you know, tuition in installments rather than having to pay everything at once, which is, of course, could also be very helpful. All right, let me talk a little bit now about working in the United States as a foreign trained lawyer. I also, I always like to think about this kind of like a two-step process. You know, I'm a lawyer myself, so I'm always trying to be very structured. So first of all, when we talk about working in the US as a foreign trained lawyer, we have to first think about your authorization to work, period. So many of our interna international students come to the United States on an F1 student visa. And there are limitations to uh, students on an F1 visa in terms of how, you know, how they can work and how they can work on campus and off campus. But the very interesting thing here is that our international students on an F1 student visa are able to apply for what's called the Optional Practical Training or OPT Work Permit. This allows them to work for up to one year after the LLM studies in the United States, which is, I think, a very important benefit of the American student visa that's not necessarily found in other countries. And almost all of our international students pursue this opportunity of staying one more year in the United States, working in a legal environment, and putting into practice all the things that they learned during their LLM studies. And of course, you're also able to make money. So that you know also helps with, of course, financing your LLM studies in the first place, the opportunity to then stay on for a year and work in the United States. So work permit for international students for one year after graduation is usually not a problem because it is a benefit of the student visa itself. So now let's talk as a second step about your ability to actually practice law in the United States as a foreign lawyer, because that's quite a different question. So first of all, here in the United States, the uh, authorization to practice law is a state matter. So there is no such thing as the US bar exam. Every individual state in the United States has their own bar exam. So there's the New York bar exam, there's the Florida bar exam, there's the California bar exam. So that's our first um, step to understand is that this is a state by state matter. Generally, most states in the United States require a juris doctor degree to sit for the state bar exam. So if you're interested in sitting for the bar in one of those states, then our GDLM joint degree option is your best option because that allows you to become a fully qualified lawyer in the United States. However, there are about a dozen states here that allow foreign trained lawyers to sit for the bar exam without the Juris Doctor degree. Usually, they require an LLM degree 
from an ABA approved law school in the United States. So those states include New York, for example, also Texas. There are about a dozen states that allow foreign trained lawyers with a qualifying LLM from a US law school to sit for the bar exam. Each of those states has their own rules as to what they require in terms of the LLM degree itself and in terms of maybe courses that students have to take. So for example, our students who wish to qualify for the New York bar, they need to take at least 24 credits, which is uh, the requirement for the LLM anyway. The LLM has to be completed in two years. So that limits also your possibility of uh, extensive part-time studies. You have to complete the LLM in two years. No online classes are allowed for New York. And the students have to take a certain number of courses. Introduction to US law, legal writing, those courses are required for our LLM degrees anyway and then a course on professional ethics and at least six more credits that are tested on the New York bar. That could include courses on contracts, business associations, um, trust in the states, torts, and so forth. So there's a wide variety of course options. So then if the LLM meets those curricular requirements, the students generally will qualify to sit for the New York bar only with their LLM, not needing the Juris Doctor. And after being admitted to a state in the United States, let's say New York in my example, you are of course fully licensed to practice this law in that state. So if you have passed and are admitted to the New York bar, you are a fully licensed New York lawyer, and you can practice fully in New York without any restrictions. But what can you do outside of the state of New York? The US is a big country. Many of our students love Florida. So they, uh, they would like to stay and practice here. So then what are your options? Well, if you're admitted to the bar anywhere in the United States, you can practice in the area of federal law outside of the state where you're admitted. So you can practice immigration law here in Florida with a New York license. You can practice bankruptcy and so forth. You can also work as in-house counsel anywhere in the country. So that's another popular option for our students who have their LLM and who have the New York bar admission and who would like to practice in Florida. They can work as in-house counsel down here with the 1,500 or so multinational corporations that are headquartered here. But very exciting is really the latest um, Florida bar rule change on this, which now allows foreign trained lawyers with a qualifying LLM to petition to sit for the Florida bar exam and to become fully qualified in Florida without a JD after having practiced law in the United States for at least two years. So in other words, our students who graduate with their LLM, who take the New York bar exam, who practice law for two years, can then come back to Florida and also sit for the Florida bar exam, and it does not require a Juris Doctor. And for some of these practice areas, you can actually do that from Florida already. For example, if you're practicing immigration law, you could be in Florida, and you can, after two years, then also sit for the Florida bar, all without the Juris Doctor. This is a very exciting rule change for us. Our students are very excited about that as well, and most of them are planning on pursuing that option. So it is now possible to qualify as a Florida lawyer without a Juris Doctor. That's a very exciting development for foreign trained lawyers here in the state. All right, now we talked about the bar exam. I wanna give you a little bit more information what the bar exam actually looks like in the US. It's actually a three part process. So first of all, you have the multi-state professional responsibility exam, also known as the MPRE. This is basically professional ethics for lawyers. This exam is given three times per year in March, August, and November. And our students can take this exam already during their LLM studies. So most of our students take a course on professional responsibility in their first semester in the fall, and then in November, sit for this part of the bar exam. Uh, so it's a very, um, you know, it's a very good way to do this because you're already studying for the class anyway, you're studying for your exam in the class, and then you're just also taking this part of the bar exam as you're all prepared. Uh, we offer prep sessions for this here at Miami Law uh, and bar support. So this is usually, um, I would say, the easiest part of the bar exam. Now, the other two parts of the bar exam come after you graduate with your LLM degree. There is the multi-state bar exam known as the MBE. That's the federal part of the bar exam. 
That's the same in all the states here in the United States, except for Louisiana. It's given two times per year. It's usually the last week of February and the last week of July. And then either the day before or the day after, you have the state-specific part of the bar exam. Most states in the U.S. have adopted the uniform bar exam, including New York, but there are some states that are still doing a state-specific test, uh, such as Florida. This is given either on the Tuesday or Thursday, right before or right after the MBE. And this is generally considered the more difficult part of the bar exam when compared to the MPRAE. We do have here at Miami Law a number of prep courses, both for the MBE and also for the Florida specific topics that our LLM students can take during their studies. We also have uh, an entire department that um, provides bar support for the students. We have bar boot camp, we have bar coaching. So we do um, assist and support our students throughout the LLM year uh, with regards to preparing and um, taking the bar exam, be that in New York or Texas or Florida. All right. And I want to leave you with um, a little bit more information on our upcoming LLM application and scholarship workshops here at Miami Law uh, with uh, Alexandria, who introduced herself earlier. Alexandria, during these workshops, will provide more information on the admissions process, on scholarships, and on application details, and can answer any questions that you might have. We will... Uh, we do these workshops in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, and actually the next one coming up on March 1st is our informational session in Spanish. We will have an English language application and scholarship workshop on March 8th. Then we will have an info session in Portuguese on March 15th, March 22nd, another English language workshop, and March 29th, we'll have another Portuguese event. So we're quite... Um, multilingual here at Miami Law and happy to answer any and all of your questions. All right. Well, thank you very much. I think that um, concludes my presentation and I'm going to hand it over to Gareth. Superb. Thank you, Sandra and Alexandra as well. Um, we've had a few questions come in. So um, I'm going to start with a few that have already been answered during the presentation. So um, I want to get them out there first before the more um, eccentric questions, if we may add. Um, talk to me more about the application process, because students have been asking, um, I, I know you've got deadlines of the 1st of May, I think you said, or May 2023. How long can a student expect that process to take? Um, and how long from applying does it take to actually getting a decision to then actually enrolling on the course? Okay, of course. Excellent question. So here, uh, we process applications on a rolling basis. Uh, so as soon as the application is complete, meaning you have submitted your application form, your transcripts, your diploma, your resume, um, your letters of recommendation and so forth, we review your complete application file usually within a matter of days. We turn it around quite quickly and on a rolling basis. So depending on, of course, uh, you know, the other holidays, weekends and such, I would say you should hear back definitely within a week, but quite often it's actually sooner than that. Excellent. And is there anything a student can do to enhance their chances of the application being approved sooner? Um, so what is it you're looking for specifically within resumes and within the application process? Of course. So we are looking for academic excellency, of course. So grades are very important. We always recommend, you know, we understand that sometimes um, in a student's academic career, there might have been things going on in their personal life uh, or otherwise that might have impacted their academic performance. And we always recommend that students explain any such incidents on their application and there is actually a specific question on our application form because of course we do take that into consideration as well. Uh, second point of course is English proficiency. It is very important to the success of our students in the LM programs that their English proficiency is at the required level which we require a 92 on the TOEFL or a 7.0 on the IELTS. So English proficiency very important. We do have the intensive legal English program for students who are you know, slightly below the requirements, 
um, or students who would like um, simply kind of like an easier start. We also see that some students prefer to come in through that program just because they would like to take it easy. It's been a while since they've gone to law school and they want to use that as an adjustment period. So the program is also available for students who have the required English score who would like to first focus on their English. Those two uh, points I think are most important and of course letters of recommendation we are looking for strong recommendations and we are looking in the statement of um, interest for information on why Miami law so we especially with our specialized programs who are usually smaller boutique programs we are looking for students with a strong interest in the specific area of the program be that international arbitration maritime law entertainment arts and sports law and so forth and in terms of speeding up the process, you know, the best thing I can recommend is to work closely with our international programs advisors. Um, don't wait until you have all your documents. You know, we, we really uh, prefer hearing from you uh, once you start the application process so we can help you along. We can make sure that you're submitting everything required and in time. Um, and as soon as you have everything in, we're able to make a decision. Excellent. Um, and going back to a previous point you just made there about the English language proficiency tests and making sure you have a certain requirement. Um, presumably, being where you guys are based, South Florida, um, you've got a very strong Latin following. Um, if their English speaking isn't great, is there Spanish speaking options if they wanted to? I know that's not the, the, you know, the ideal scenario, but is the opportunity open to students? So... We do require the English proficiency to enter the LLM because most classes at Miami Law are in English and we have found that in our experience, English proficiency is a good indicator about the student's academic performance in the LLM. And of course, grades are very important to your future job searches and so forth. However, you're absolutely right. We are located you know, at the gateway to Latin America and the university actually offers a lot of opportunities to students in that area. So first of all, we have uh, courses where students can learn Spanish at the university. We have students, we have courses on legal Spanish, Spanish for lawyers. And we also have courses that are taught in Spanish at the law school that require the highest level of Spanish proficiency. And we even participated in international moot court competitions that are entirely in Spanish. And those, the last two are usually the more interesting options for native Spanish speakers. And the first two that I mentioned um, are usually interesting options for other international students who want to take this time to actually add another language to their repertoire and being in Miami and studying in Miami is a perfect opportunity to be learning Spanish. And that's a huge advantage, especially over other US law schools as well. You know, you mentioned earlier on in the presentation that, you know, there is life outside of New York, you know, a lot of these people <laughs> do the New York bar exam and forget that they can venture outside. Um, one of the questions I want to ask is about summer schools and the opportunity to either arrive earlier um, or stay a little bit longer if you wanted to. If you wanted to arrive early, adapt to the city, adapt to the campus, get used to everything, is that summer school, maybe summer school is not the best way of putting it, but is that opportunity available for students? So it is possible to start in the summer or extend your LLM studies through the summer at the end of your LLM. Those are possibilities. Um, Aside from doing classes in the summer, international students on an F1 student visa are generally allowed to enter the United States 30 days before the start of the program. So we start our program with a two week orientation before regular classes start. So students are then able to basically enter the US more or less six weeks prior to the actual start of classes to take an entire month to adjust, to find housing and so forth, and then have two weeks of orientation, um, usually in early August, where we you know, also um, start to um, uh, educate them on the university and on the law school processes and set them up with their computers and whatnot. So in our experience, that's usually been a sufficient time for the students. And we do recommend that you enter on the earlier side of things to really get acclimated to the city and to also take some time to explore because LLM studies get quite busy at some point. So it's always nice to take a little bit of time 
um, before you start to explore. In our case, you know, we have the beautiful beaches, we have the Everglades, the alligators, we have, you know, we're like an hour from the Bahamas. So there's quite a lot to do here. And we always encourage the students to, you know, focus on your studies, but also take advantage of this year um, and of where you are to explore your surroundings. That was, that was going to be my next point, actually. And you blended into that lovely there. Um, Miami as a city, beautiful place, fantastic place. I've been there once before and vibrant, busy, everything you need it to be. But also there's a lot of quieter places if you want to. I mean, even your background there um, shows just how relaxing it can be. Um, Alexandra, do you want me to bring you in at this point and just talk to me a little bit more about the city and talk to me about what opportunities there are for students to do whilst you're studying because it's so important that you're studying somewhere that is enjoyable you settle in well is affordable um and there it's very cosmopolitan so there's different cultures and different varieties of people there I've been living um, in Florida my whole life, but in Miami for about the past four years. Um, and I think just the diversity makes it, you know, a really wonderful place to live. The university is actually located in a more residential um, area. It's located in Coral Gables. So there's lots of, you know, more residential life, um, you know, beautiful scenery and things like that, parks, um, shopping malls, um, experiences like that. But then it's also very close to downtown, which is like Brickell area. It has a lot of like the law firms companies, things like that. And it's also very close to the wonderful beaches. Um, I think it's really important for students to always make time to do, you know, fun extracurricular activities, get involved on campus. There's a lot of different organizations, even outside of the law school. There's like scuba diving teams and stuff like that that you can get involved with. Um, so just making sure that you have time to do, to do those things as well, um, in addition to your studies and make the most of your time here in Miami. Important to point out as well that all different types of student, obviously, being the great city it is and large city and where you're based, you know, students with families, more mature students, obviously, you're open to helping those um, types of people that want to come to the city and the state to settle in a little bit better. Of course, we have all kinds of students in our program. We have students who work part time, we have students with families, the university actually has a daycare on campus. And many of our students like that opportunity because they can drop off their kids in the morning, and then very easily just pick them up after classes. So I think that's very easy. There's lots of good schools right around the university, also for elementary, middle school and high school. So our students, from our experience, have been able to adjust to that quite well. I think what Alexandria mentioned is also very important. This is actually the campus. This is a picture of the campus. So the campus is very serene, but at the same time, you're only 30 minutes away on public transportation. There's a there's a, um, a high rail train that connects the university with the downtown Brickell area. So our students are able very easily to go from the classroom to networking events at the law firms to those practicum placements that I mentioned where they work in the law firms or companies because it's all very well connected and really very close but you do get both experiences between you know swinging in a hammock on campus and then also going to an evening event in Brickell uh, at a law firm so I think that's quite nice. Excellent one of the questions come in as well we'll finish on these two um, do you have any LLM courses in human rights or in property law um, without having to go into every course you offer are those courses that you offer in particular? Yes, so actually those are two of our focus areas, I would say. We have a specialty LLM program in real estate and real property development. So that program provides uh, a number of courses in the specific area of real property law. So if a student is interested in that area, we would recommend that they apply to that specialty program. Um, in addition to that, we have a human rights program, an international human rights program. They are very active. We have a number of different courses in that area uh, related to international human rights and also a number of lectures and uh, pro bono opportunities and writing opportunities and actually a specific international mood court competition in that area as well that students uh, can hone their oral advocacy skills in international human rights. So I think we're very well represented in both of those areas. 
Okay, and the final questions come through as well. Um, important to point out as well, anyone that's asked any questions, they, we will reach out to you afterwards and reach out to you personally. Um, they'd like to know if the two recommendation letters are mandatory. They've just pointed out that they graduated a long time ago. Since then, they're in employment. Um, thus, would the employer recommendation letter be suffice instead? So generally speaking, we do require two recommendation letters, but we do understand that if students have been out of school for a long time, that their recommendations might come from a professional background rather than from an academic background. So we do account for that possibility. And we can always discuss with the students on an individual basis what might be appropriate in their situation. Okay, and I just want to finish up with one final point as well. Um, if a student wants to find out more information, if they want to do a virtual tour, you know, much more virtual events like this, international student, what would you recommend they do? Where should they head towards? What website? Where is a good opportunity for them to find out more information? Obviously, LLM study, but obviously they want to delve in further and apply. What do they do next? Of course. So first of all, I would say join us for one of our virtual application workshops and scholarship workshops with Alexandria. Uh, I think that they're full of you know great information. But in addition to that, uh, students should head to our website uh, and schedule individual um, Zoom calls with Alexandria through Calendly. We also have a virtual campus tour on the website that they can watch. And of course, if you're in town, we are happy to give you an in-person tour, connect you with current students um, and so forth, and also invite you to some of our events. So that, those are all options, but the best starting point would be to just reach out to us and go to our website and then go from there. Excellent. Sandra, Alexandria, thanks for your time. Been very insightful and a great opportunity for any students watching this, even now, over the next 12 months, watching on demand on our website, the wonderful opportunities that sit in Miami, Florida. But for now, a huge thank you, and we look forward to working with you again in the future. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All the best. Thank you.